What is up you guys, it is Lauren and Sam. We are the trailer couple dedicated to making this complicated life just a little bit more simple. Thank you for hanging out with us today as we analyze our tow vehicle, which is a 2017 Toyota Tundra Crew Max. So we recently had a comment which suggested that we make a video about our tow vehicle, which is a Tundra and we thought, what a great idea. We are gonna dive into some real world perspective since we've been towing with our Tundra for two years. We're gonna talk about some things that we made in regards to modification to the Tundra, some things that we really like about the Tundra, two things we really don't like about our tow vehicle, and then we'll answer the question, would we buy a Tundra as our tow vehicle again? Before we get too deep into it, let's recognize that everybody and their mother does have an opinion on tow vehicles. Our goal is not to make this a Toyota versus Ford war or debate, but if you really wanna get into it, you can you know comment down below because apparently that does help our channel yeah out i think they call it engagement, engagement or something engage below you smash you that subscribe smash button. it and we might smash it smash back Wait, don't know what that means <laughs> Our goal is to give you a long-term perspective on the Toyota Tundra and how that's held up as our main and primary tow vehicle over the past two years. A few years ago, when we started researching for tow vehicles for our 27-foot Airstream travel trailer, we went back and forth between several makes and several models before landing upon our Tundra. Also, it's like a million degrees in this car and we were gonna film the whole thing in here, but I am sweating profusely, so we're gonna move to the trailer, so be right back. So what we didn't know before buying the Tundra was whether or not it'd be enough truck, because there are lots of other half-ton trucks with higher payloads, higher maximum towing capacities, and we were just concerned that, you know, it wouldn't be enough. Our trailer, fully loaded, tanks full, everything, weighs pretty dang close to 8,000 pounds, which just happens to be about 80% of our Tundra's maximum towing capacity. So going into buying our Tundra, we knew we were gonna be pushing this vehicle pretty much to its maximum, and I think we have. We've towed with the vehicle over 12,000 miles, and that includes dirt roads, steep grades, um, thunderstorms, hailstorms, tornadoes, what other things? Everything, sandstorms, heat. heat, cold. We've used and abused it. A good piece of advice that we received before buying our tow vehicle is that you should not regularly exceed 80% of your maximum towing capacity because those maximum towing capacities are determined by the truck nerds who have a laboratory somewhere and those are ideal conditions. Those are not up steep grades and down steep grades with 100 degree heats and things like that that you may experience in the real world. So it's a good rule of thumb to always come in, you know, a little bit underneath that maximum towing capacity. So before going any further, let's talk about a couple of specifics because there is some variation between different Tundra models. So for those of you who don't know, the Tundra basically stayed the same from 2007 all the way up until 2021 when they came out with the 2022 model, which was slightly different. So ours is a 2017, it's a 5.7 liter V8 engine. We bought this vehicle used because we have vowed in our life that you should never buy a new car or stick into it. Stick into it. Should you buy a new car ever, ever or just buy used cars, please let us know your opinions in the comments below for the engagement. For the engagement. Do it for the engagement. Give us a good argument for a new car. So the only modifications that we made, we added a more aggressive off-road tire because we do quite a bit of off-roading. We like those boondocking spots, you know? Mm -hmm. We also added a decked drawer system into the bed of our truck, which provides a little bit more storage and super helpful because when you live full-time in your trailer like us, we don't have a lot of storage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's been great. We've really enjoyed that. We have. Mm -hmm. And then we always tow with a weight distribution hitch. Um, we have a Blue Ox. Uh, it's super helpful and I've towed without it and I've towed with it and it does make a huge difference. So enough of the backstory. Let's get into a couple things that we like about the Tundra. So one of the things that we really like about our Tundra and that is personally really important to us is safety. We do not need to be able to fly up a hill going 70 miles an hour pulling the trailer, but we do need to be able to stop going down the hill on the other side safely. Um, and that has been something that we have not had an issue with in our past two years of towing, which has been awesome. The Tundra has knocked it out of the park in the safety category. We've never had an issue in 12,000 miles. It has an integrated braking system control because going down those hills, you need to be able to sometimes adjust your, your trailer brake firmness. It was never fun smelling your own brakes 
it, it happens when you tow as much as we do. I think it's only happened a couple mm -hmm. times over the course of the last couple of years. We conquered some pretty steep grades when we were out west in the Wild West. Um, we went over, you know, the Sierras, the Cascades, um, around the Tahoe area. I don't think we once ever, I personally did not once ever question our safety with towing um, with the Tundra. So there's a couple other things that you can do to stay safe while on the road, aside from having a proper tow vehicle. One of those is always making sure that you have adequate tire pressure. Some people run them a little bit low, some people run them a little bit high, there are different opinions on that, but kind of know why you're doing what you're doing. In certain high heat environments, you may wanna run them a little bit lower because those tires do get a little bit hot. Um, another thing is to empty your tanks when possible because if you are carrying full tanks, that is a substantial amount of weight. We try not to, to tow with, with full tanks unless we're going boondocking and then sometimes you just can't avoid it. And the last thing is, that, like I said, we always tow with a weight distribution hitch. We have a Blue Ox weight distribution hitch, which we really like. I think Tundra actually highly recommends or maybe even requires you to tow with a weight distribution hitch if your trailer weighs 5,000 pounds or more. The next reason we really like our Tundra is because of its dependability. So like I said before, Tundra has not made any major changes to this truck since 2007. And I know they just came out with a new model in 2022, but the, our 2017 was pretty much the same thing that was made back in 2007. Now, a lot of people may think that's a bad thing, but we think it is a great thing. Toyota had 10 years to work out the kinks before we bought our truck. So from a dependability standpoint, it has been outstanding. So I use it as my computer, my computer car. I use it as my computer car, commuter car. <laughs> you said it twice. <laughs> I said it twice. Oh, That's you use this truck as my computer. <laughs> I said it three times. So we did buy this car used, like I talked about, with about 45,000 miles. I think it has 76,000 miles on it. 12,000 miles of those are towing. I use it as my commuter car, so I do need something that's very reliable. Um, I want something that's fun to drive, but I want something that's gonna start in the morning. So it's been great for that. So aside from shaving down the rotors about 60,000 miles, we have not had to perform any unscheduled maintenance on this truck which is fantastic because it has had quite a bit of tow miles. In terms of dependability, we are not the only people who are saying it's very dependable. I know Consumer Reports came out with a report saying that the 2021 version of this truck was the number one most dependable truck in its class. So you can put a lot of weight or a little weight into those reports um, because I mean, there could be some biases there and things like that. But from our two years of pressing this truck to the max, it's been very dependable. Mm -hmm. And we honestly probably just jinxed it because our next video will likely be about our truck breaking down in the middle of the nowhere. So stay tuned. In the, the middle of the, the nowhere. nowhere. That means it's worse than nowhere. That's worse than nowhere because it's the nowhere. It's the nowhere. Which will be really good for our YouTube channel, I think, because it'll be the most clickbait thing of all time. Truck breaks down in the middle, middle of the, the nowhere. nowhere. It's art. It's art. <laughs> All right, number three, let's talk about comfort. Comfort, yes, we love our Tundra because of how comfortable it is. Leather seats are very comfortable. Um, some people think that this version of the Tundra is very outdated because of its lack of technology, but Sam and I actually really like that because that means that less things can break. So, huge fan of that. Um, also, the Crew Max seat is huge and a huge perk as well um, that we've really enjoyed having a little bit of extra space in the truck. Now we know there are some pretty cool options out there in other trucks and models. Uh, the Ford F-150 Power Boost, is that what it's called? I think it's called the, the Power the Boost. The Ford F-150 Power Boost, correct us if we're wrong there, but this is pretty cool. It has a 30 amp hookup in the back of the truck so that you can use your truck as a generator for your trailer if you know it has a 30 amp it's crazy that's it, so cool it's so cool so there are some pretty cool options out there and if you're interested in some of those fancier technology type things that sam and i don't know a lot about look into them um because they've done some pretty cool stuff with trucks and if you have one of those 4f 150 power boost if that's what they're called let us know in the comments below and let us know what you think of it because we think that's pretty dang cool that you can do that safety reliability comfort check 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 and it's just devilishly good looking. It's so good looking. <laughs> Is it though? Okay, so we promised we would get into two things that we really do not like about our Tundra. And here they are. Let's do it. Let's get into them. Ooh. So one thing that we find really annoying is the blind spot monitor of this truck. It yes. does not work very well when you are towing. And I know like the Ford F-150 and maybe the Ram 1500 kind of fix this technology a little bit earlier. 
and the new Tundra, the 2022 Tundra, I believe, fixed this technology so that you can have a functional blind spot monitor while you're towing. But our version is all over the board yeah. and you can't rely on it at all, which is kind of unfortunate because that's like the best time to have a functioning blind spot monitor is when you're towing and you can't really see everything. So we just heavily rely on our tow mirrors more than anything. I mean, it'd be really nice though to have something that would take into account the fact that you are towing behind you. I think, I mean, we towed through Los Angeles, downtown Los Angeles, Atlanta, like Atlanta, yeah. St. Louis, like big cities, and it gets a little bit dicey when you're in traffic jams. So having that technology that some of the newer trucks have would be very beneficial. We bought tow mirrors from Walmart that you literally strap on. Like they're like the worst type of tow mirrors of all time. Yeah. <laughs> they jiggle when you drive down the interstate and it's like yeah. But hey, legally I have tow mirrors on oh so you gosh. can't pull me over. The second thing that we really don't love about our Tundra is it's very, very poor gas mileage. Like we are talking seven to nine miles per gallon, people. Not good. And with gas prices going through the roof right now, this is less than ideal. Compared to other half ton trucks that were made around the same time as our Tundra, we have read that they actually do get a little bit better gas mileage as compared to what ours gets. But keep in mind that our Tundra does have the 5.7 V8 engine and other half ton trucks are kind of shifting away from, from this. They still offer the V8 in a lot of different brands, there but is they're a moving away shift. from it. Yeah. So. The new 2022 Tundra doesn't even offer a V8 option. It now has the V6 twin turbo and the V6 twin turbo hybrid. So it doesn't even offer the V8 option anymore. There will be some very angry customers, I know. If someone does has experience towing with a new Tundra, I know it gets better gas mileage in general, but if you have any experience with what kind of gas mileage it gets when towing, we'd love you to leave that in the comments down below just for our frame of reference. All right, so, Knowing what we know now, would we buy this truck again? Mm -hmm. And is it too much for our Airstream? Mm -hmm. What do you think? I say yes, we would likely buy this truck again. I think the biggest reason I've really enjoyed our 2017 Tundra is based off of what we touched on, the lack of technology. We have honestly had no problems with it in regards to anything breaking down besides the scheduled maintenance that we need which has been a huge blessing because when you rely on a vehicle to get your home from point a to point b you want that vehicle to not break down so you can actually use it for towing um so i would say yeah i would definitely get the tundra again what about you i would say yes with an asterisk, there's an asterisk there. So if there was an electric truck option that had a good enough radius that could tow 8,000 pounds, I would look into it, strongly look into it. That being said, it doesn't exist right now. And with all the other trucks on the market, I think I would buy this 2017 Tundra over a brand new 2022. And not just because we have this weird thing against buying new cars. We have just loved this truck in every aspect of it. It's been super comfortable. The back seat is huge. It's been a reliable. We have driven through 110 degree heat, yeah. up 8% grades, um, carrying 8,000 pounds. And this thing has handled it like a champ. We drove through Death Valley, yeah. like in the middle of the summer. Like who would do that? We did. Our Tundra just was like, hey, give me more. I want to, I want to do it again. Like run it back. I did not ask that. So we've been very, very happy with this truck in terms of reliability, in terms of safety, in terms of comfort. I love the aesthetics of this truck. I like the old school mentality of the truck where there's not too much technology, not too many moving parts that can break. Again, my, my dad's got an old Chevy truck and that thing is simple. It's an engine and that thing is still running. So the simpler a truck can be, I think the happier that I am personally. I mean, obviously there are still computer systems on board with this thing, but as we move forward, they just become more and more advanced. And at that point, if I'm ever trying to fix a truck that has too much technology going on, I, it's just it's just a nightmare. So um, we're thankful that this truck has held up real well over the last 12,000 miles. And my wife just gave me the look that I am rambling. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off and say, yes, with an asterisk of a electric truck if it existed with a long enough radius that it could tow a trailer, moving on. Okay. Done. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm gonna cut them off. We're out of control. Um, if you have, like you said, any experience towing with these new V6 twin turbo um, engines, towing with another type of tow vehicle, let us know because we are always open to your opinions and love getting to know you guys. Uh, otherwise, 
we're gonna cut that. And until next time, happy trails. Happy trails. <laughs> it's a compliment sandwich. You put sandwich. the compliment here, you put the feedback here, you put the compliment here, and then you smash it together. It's a compliment sandwich. <laughs> Doesn't even matter if it's the same compliment twice. <laughs> I really like that jacket, but I hate that shirt, but that jacket is great. This jacket's great. See, and then you just, yeah, put it in between. You are Actually, very good looking, but you're really annoying, but you're also but very you're also good looking. Good looking. Mm -hmm. I really like your trailer, but it's not an airstream, but I really like it. Ooh, ooh. 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 <laughs> that is very divisive. I know. That was really funny, but it was a little bit divisive, but I thought it was very funny. <laughs> Lauren and I, for the most part, try not to be too controversial, but I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> what are you gonna say? Fours are trash. <gasps> I'm just kidding. Ah! <laughs>